worst date I've ever been on. He made out with my forehead. He starts beating on the steering wheel. This sex, this sex. She said, honey, you need to run like hell now. He brought up all of his exes. He tried to blame his racism on his cat. This guy threw me out of his car because as a guy who is single and not terribly excited to mingle, I can get exhausted sometimes with dating, but something that helps me keep things in perspective is to hear women's terrible dating stories, because it reminds me that maybe, just maybe, there are some advantages to being a straight man in society. So let's take a look at some first date horror stories involving guys who are, let's say, severely lacking in riz. They're not in the business of rizness. I want to tell you about the worst date I've ever been on. We went to a Mexican restaurant. He ordered three pitchers of water. Not three glasses, three pitchers. I thought we were gonna play a game or something. No, he said, I love water. I watched him drink three pitchers of water while I waited for the food to arrive. I don't know if it's weirder to say that or to not say anything at all. Because if you drink three pitchers of water, it is kind of the elephant in the room. I guess you could say I'm really thirsty because then she'd be like, oh, I, maybe he like went for a run before the date and didn't get a chance to drink anything yet. Saying I love water just kind of means that you love the feeling of water in your body for some reason. You might not even be thirsty. <laughs> Thirsty? <sighs> nope. So, you ever been skiing? Then he drove me home. He said, we should watch a movie. At one point, he asked if he could lay down and rest his head in my lap. I've never done this, but I've noticed this seems to be a move that some guys have in their, like, arsenal of moves for, like, escalating physical touch. Like how guys will try to put their arm around a girl while watching a movie. Some guys ask if they can rest their head on the woman's lap. Can you use your lap as a pillow, please? Yeah. <laughs> When the movie ended, I told him he should go. He asked if I would walk him to the door. I lived in a studio. The door was six feet away. At the door, he asked if he could kiss me. I said no. Then he asked if he could kiss my forehead. I said yes. He made out with my forehead for about 15 seconds. And I just stood there. So can I kiss you? Um, you can kiss my forehead, I guess. <laughs> Fine. It's all face to me. <laughs> How was that? Please leave. When he finished, he told me he had a really great time. When he finished or when he finished? He told me he had a really great time. What if he said it to her forehead? I had a really great time. And all I had to show for that day was negative eight dollars and a forehead covered in saliva. He goes home to his buddies later and they're like, hey, how was the date? I got to second base, bro. She let you slobber on her forehead? Hell yeah, dude. And I finished. He like has no idea what physical intimacy is supposed to be. He thinks that full-blown sex is like rubbing his butt on a woman's shoulder. And then when it's over, he's like, wow, was that as good for you as it was for me? What just happened? This made me think of one time when I was a teenager, I saw a young couple kissing in the mall and then the girl licked the guy's forehead. So. I don't remember what year World War II started, but I remember that for some reason. Thanks, Brain. So I had this really big dude ask me out on a date. And before y'all say anything, I'm a big girl myself, but this guy was probably pushing 500 pounds. So he took me to CeCe's Pizza. We walk in, everybody knows him by name. They're high-fiving him and shit. I, I love the idea of being a celebrity at a local CeCe's Pizza. Everyone applauds when he walks in while he's high-fiving people. An employee tosses him a slice of pizza. <laughs> Also, the fact that this lady doesn't have a problem with going to CeCe's Pizza on a first date says to me that she probably lives in a small town where restaurant options are limited. It's either CeCe's Pizza or eating slices of deli meat in a Walmart. We sit down, this motherfucker ate eight plates of pizza before they brought him his usual, which was two more pizzas. No wonder they love him there. He's probably single-handedly keeping them in business with all the pizza he eats. They make so much money from him that it's like a fancy upscale CeCe's pizza with like chandeliers and a pizza sauce fountain. There's a portrait of the guy hanging on the wall. I also like that his usual is two more pizzas. Is it like two pizzas stacked on top of each other? And my favorite pizza topping is another pizza. Also, let's rewind for a second. I've been to CeCe's Pizza. It's self-service. This dude is getting treated like royalty if they're bringing pizzas to him. They have a waiter on staff just to serve him. Red pepper flakes for your pizza, sir? They brought him his usual, which was two more pizzas, which he proceeded to fold double and then he wrapped him up in a napkin and he put him down his pants and he was putting him in his pocket. He put the pizza in his pants? And what, the grease is just soaking through his pants, dripping onto the floor? When he walks out, he leaves a trail of grease like a snail. I like to think he actually stuffed the pizza down his pants and not just in his pockets. The pizza stays warm if it's wedged in between my thighs. I call that my man oven. When he pulls the pizza out of his pants, it's even hotter than before he put it in. He said he was taking pizza home to his grandma who didn't have money for groceries. We went back to his house and his grandma was outside and I said, hey, he's got your food. She said, honey, 
His parents have had to refinance their house to feed his big ass. You need to run like hell now. Grandma's really blowing up his spot considering he sneaks pizza out of restaurants for her. As the grandma's talking to this woman, she like reaches into the guy's pants to pull out the pizza. My grandson's a disaster. Do yourself a favor and get out while you can, girl. Oh. Unless the guy was lying about the pizza being for his grandma. Maybe the pizza was for him, but he was too embarrassed to admit it. Actually, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, they brought him his usual and that's what he stuffed into his pants for his grandma? Why would his usual be the pizza he brings to his grandma? Oh yeah, this pizza, it's for my grandma. How come your name is spelled out in pepperonis if it's for your grandma? How I met this guy was through church. So he tells me that he wants to take me on a date and treat me like the queen that I am. At this point, I'm not wanting to go on the date anymore. He has icked me out. He had shown up to my work. Um, like I'm not answering the phone. He shows up to my work. Uh oh. Sounds like this guy is from Creepy Town, USA. The only city whose flag is just a solid red color. I told him, you know, I'd let him know if we were gonna hang out later. And then I said later, oh, I'm going to sleep. He shows up to my work the next day and says, I was up all night waiting for you to text me. Um if you were gonna hang out or not. Like, you need to be a better at communicating if things are gonna work between us. Why would you stay up all night waiting for a text like that? Oh, it's 5 a.m. and I'm so tired. But she might text back any minute. So it starts with us going to church with my family. He invited himself. I have about one hour in between to go home and prepare myself to go on this date. I did not want to go, but I felt so bad to cancel, so I went. He picks me up, we pray in the car before we leave. God, please forgive this girl for being such a bitch towards me and not responding to my texts, even though it would have been very easy to. <laughs> Women, am I right? <laughs> well, you know, you made them. Not your best work, by the way. <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding. First stop is McDonald's. McDonald's? You can't talk a big game about how you're gonna treat a woman like a queen and then take her to McDonald's. You gotta take her to Burger King, like the Burger Queen that she is. First stop, McDonald's, because he said that my family did not let him finish his food at lunch. And the reason that he didn't finish his food is I swear he didn't take a breath, he didn't stop talking about how he is so mature, he's do this and that, he's gonna do this and that the whole time. Nobody got a word in. Well, I didn't get to finish my food because I had to tell your family how great I am. When he sings Christian worship songs, he makes them about himself. How great is our Todd? Sing with me, how great is our Todd? If you grew up in the church like I did, you get that reference. And then after he got McDonald's, he got two cheeseburgers and he starts choking on the pickle. And I know that I should feel sympathy for that, but I was really, really icked out at that point And I really wanted to go home. <laughs> Wait, he was choking, choking? Or like a pickle went down the wrong pipe and he needed to work through it for a second. If he was actually choking, that is so callous to be icked out by it. God, it's so ick when a guy's like dying in front of you. Like, I'm not going to perform the Heimlich maneuver on you. I barely know you. This guy puts the ick in Heimlich. Next stop, Krispy Kreme. He gets us six donuts, um, and he is complaining about how much those six donuts cost. Before we're, we went on the date, he told me, you know, don't even bring my wallet. He's paying for everything. Aren't donuts pretty cheap? I've never been to Krispy Kreme, but I thought you could get like a dozen donuts for six bucks. Maybe inflation hit the donut market extra hard. The yeast in those donuts and the prices have something in common. They're both rising. Moving on. We went to the mall for the shopping part of the day. He tells me that he wants me to point out things that he would look good in and that he's not buying anything today. Well, I studied fashion in college. I just went along with it. At this point, I was like, whatever, I'm just gonna go along with it. I was like, well, this is cute. And he's like, eh, no, it's not. Oh my God, no, it's not. Like, you have no style. That's why we're here. <laughs> you have no style. That's why we're here. She's like, Todd, you're wearing Crocs, cargo shorts, a tank top, and a clip-on tie. Literally anything here would be an improvement. Next stop, he knows that I don't like coffee is Starbucks. This guy somehow found one of the only young women in the whole country who doesn't like coffee, and he took her to Starbucks for a date. And we are going in there and we get water uh, to do a Bible study. We've prayed probably three times by this point on the date. They've prayed three times already? This guy's talking to God more than he's talking to her. She's basically the third wheel on this date. She's just tagging along while this dude and God are broing out with each other. When he's praying, he starts acting like he's having a conversation with God. God, please nourish this food to our bodies. <laughs> that's right, that's right. You said it. You said it, God. Uh, you hit the nail on the head. Now he says the fancy restaurant that he had in mind for us to go eat was Texas Roadhouse. The place with the peanuts on the floor. But he's been planning this date for a week and he didn't know that the town we went to, there wasn't a Texas Roadhouse. It is amazing that he planned so many stops on this date and half of them are a complete swing and a miss. Okay, so here's the plan for our big date. First up, McDonald's. We just ate lunch with my family. I'm not hungry yet. Then we're going to Starbucks. I don't like coffee. Then we're going to Texas Roadhouse. There's no Texas Roadhouse in this town. And, well, I wanted this to be a surprise, but I guess I'll tell you now. We're gonna pray 40 times. This date hasn't even begun yet, and I already want to go home. So he's like, well, there's a Mexican restaurant over here. I say, I would love Mexican. <laughs> he's holding his box. He says, are you ready to go? We just headed home. 
Well, now at this point, he says it's time for us to share our testimonies with each other. I won't share too much into that, but basically he slut-shamed me for um, have having sex at 24 years old. He didn't just slut-shame me. He almost started crying and breathing heavily, saying, I can forgive you. I can get through this. It's gonna be okay. I'm imagining as she's telling him this, he's gagging like Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber. So I've had sex before. Multiple times. And I enjoyed it. So I'm like, take me home right now. Next thing I know, he starts beating on the steering wheel. This sucks! This sucks! This sucks! <laughs> As he's hitting the steering wheel, he's honking the horn. This sucks! This sucks! This sucks! The car in front of him is like, What is this guy honking at me for? Then he looked at me with the craziest eyes I've ever seen and said, You know what? And I said, What? He said, The devil's gonna use this against us. The devil's gonna use this to tear us apart. And then he wiped his tears. Becca, it's obvious that the devil has infiltrated your soul, but it's okay. I know a good exorcist. We'll go first thing in the morning, sweetheart. And yeah, the devil's doing this girl a solid if he's trying to tear them apart. This guy's a lunatic. Well, first he hugs me, kind of won't let me go in the car. He does it while they're still driving. Oh, Becca, why is the devil ah, doing ah, this to me, Oh my god! Don't grab the steering wheel! Yeah, We're gonna crash! crash! And then I go inside and cry and sit in a dark room. I'm scrolling on Facebook and I see. Oh, me and him. It was a picture of us leaving the restaurant that the restaurant had posted. And the caption was, The USA might be free, but this restaurant isn't. Fourth of July, Dine and Dash edition. I call the restaurant, crying, they feel bad for me, take the picture down. I text him a screenshot of the picture. He says he forgot to pay. Forgot to pay. Oh, oops, I forgot you're supposed to exchange money for goods and services. Something tells me he just didn't have the money to pay. Those donuts must have really cleaned him out. Actually, you know what? Maybe they did. Hold on, let's let's go back over the clues of the story here. So he was surprised by the cost of the donuts. He is complaining about how much those six donuts cost. Then they go to the mall for shopping, but when they get there, he's suddenly not paying for anything today. So he went to the mall for the shopping part of the day. He tells me that he's not buying anything today. Then he takes her to Starbucks knowing she doesn't like coffee, and they get water, which is free. Next stop is Starbucks, and we get water. Then they go to a restaurant where he doesn't pay for the meal. He says he forgot to pay. I think this dude ran out of money at Krispy Kreme, even though it was only the second stop on the date. I mean, it sucks for him if he's strapped for cash, but like, don't plan elaborate dates if you can't afford it. Well, I'm glad Becca made it out alive. It sounds like it was a harrowing experience for her. I'm saying Becca like that's her real name. I just made that up. I don't actually know what this girl's real name is. Let's see. Her name is Bratz Doll with six L's. Huh, that's unusual. Must be a biblical name. All right, let's take a look at one from Reddit. The guy insisted to order the same meal as me, even though he never ate that type of food before. He ate a quarter of his food, then he proceeded to throw up flamboyantly. I love the use of the word flamboyantly to describe someone barfing. Blah! The barf is just shooting out of his mouth. Blah! Blah! Blah, 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 blah! He sounds like an opera singer as he's barfing with his head in the toilet. Oh! Now you'd think that in order for his stomach to have a reaction like that, the food must have been like raw sushi or a really rare steak or something. But someone asked this woman, what did you order? And she said, spaghetti. Why would you have such a violent reaction to spaghetti? I guess for this guy putting spaghetti into his body is like putting Mentos into a bottle of Coke. He starts throwing up literally the second spaghetti touches his mouth. Mmm, spaghetti. Ah! The girl is like, oh my god, are you okay? Oh, I'm so sorry. I just wanted to impress you and make you think I like spaghetti. Ah! So we walk to the first restaurant. He starts talking about his girl best friend. But the way he's talking about her is like, he's obviously in love with her and like she won't give him the time of day. I'm pretty sure he like called her in the middle of the dinner too. Oh, uh, hey, Stephanie, just wanted to call and make sure that you're still not in love with me. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just checking. I thought maybe you had changed your mind since I called you and asked you earlier this morning. But yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then he brought up all of his exes and why all of them broke up and didn't work out. Oh, uh, let's see. There was Rachel. We broke up because she was a bitch. Cheyenne. We broke up because she was a bitch. Allison. I don't remember why we broke up. Oh, wait. Yeah, I do. Make a bitch. I asked what your favorite book is. We're walking along this pathway. He's like, I really have to pee. He like goes just like to pee like off the trail. So he's peeing and I have my back turned to him. This man says to me, oh, you don't have to turn around. What? Hey, you know you don't have to turn around. Yeah, I know I don't have to turn around. I want to. Very much so. Does he think that's romantic or something? Hey, you're my number one. 
So then he starts trauma dumping to me on the roof. At least he didn't start regular dumping. And then he looks in my eyes and he goes, I know I really like you because I don't even want to hook up with you right now. What? So women don't like it when you say that to them. Okay, got it. Well, you learn something new every day. I went on a date with this guy who um, threw me out of his car at 1.30 in the morning because he was angry that I didn't believe in aliens. And he said that I was ignorant and shallow to think that we're the only living species in this whole universe and that I deserve to walk home. I mean, I do think aliens are real in the sense that like, there's probably alien life somewhere out there in the universe, even if it hasn't visited Earth. But I wouldn't get mad at someone for not believing that. Why did it bother him so much? Maybe he is an alien and he was insulted by her remarks. He was that farmer alien from Men in Black. Could I interest you in a glass of sugar water, my lady? What's great too is that in the comments, the women are like, what? Oh my God, I'm glad you're okay. Sis, you dodged a bullet. And then there's a bunch of dudes defending the existence of aliens. Oh wait, that's what I did. I mean, I do think aliens are real in the sense that, like, there's probably alien life somewhere out there in the universe. Wow, maybe it's just a guy thing. We feel like we have to defend the existence of aliens. Yeah, but, but like, aliens do exist, though. Like, they are real. They're out there somewhere. They, they exist. The guys watching this TikTok think it's a bad date from the man's point of view. Somewhere on TikTok, the guy in this story posted his own video where he's like, I was on the worst date. This woman didn't even believe in aliens. All the comments are dudes like, that is awful. I'm so sorry. I hope you threw her out of your car. Next up, we've got bad first dates with some of those good old-fashioned racist remarks, just like your grandma used to make. We get to his apartment. I was like, oh, look at your cat. She's doing the loaf thing. Like she had her legs tucked. He goes, oh yeah. She's like, N word, yada, yada, yada. He makes a joke. I mean, I went, what did you just say? And he starts, you know, blubbering. He's trying to make excuses. He goes, oh, you know, in my head, my cat is like a, she's like a, she's like a racist girly. That's not even a good defense because it means he's imagining the racist stuff in his head. No, no, see, like, in my head, my cat is always saying the N-word, like, constantly. What if cats actually were racist? That would suck. But they were racist towards a weirdly specific race, like Eastern Lithuanians. Anytime someone from Eastern Lithuania was nearby, all the cats in the vicinity would flip out and start attacking them. So we went to go get drinks. He says, you're Jewish, right? Because on my profile where we matched, it said that I'm Jewish because I am. With the culture of how things are right now, I don't tend to like scream that I'm Jewish in public places because people are insane. So I kind of made a joke and was like, I am, but I don't tend to like scream it. He proceeded to spew the most anti-Semitic, offensive bullshit I've ever heard in my life. I don't really know if he just wanted an opportunity to say a bunch of anti-Semitic bullshit to a Jewish person, but I got up and left. As I was walking away, he was like, let me know if you want to play pickleball sometime. I was like, what? Part of me like literally leaving this date 27 minutes in makes you think that I want to play pickleball with you. I think she's right that he just wanted to say that stuff to a Jewish person. But also, what's up with the pickleball thing? Maybe he thinks all Jewish people are great at pickleball or something. Like that's a racist stereotype that he somehow invented in his own head. Every time he drives by a synagogue, he yells out his window, PICKLEBALL LOVERS! Maybe he's trying to build a pickleball team and this is his really inefficient way of doing it. If only there was a better way to build a pickleball team than meeting women through dating apps and yelling racist tirades at them. We went to Dairy Queen. As Soon as I leave, he texts me that he loves me. I freaked out, I blocked him. He kept FaceTiming me from different numbers. So eventually I picked up to get him to stop. On the FaceTime, he called me several racial slurs. He said he only liked me for the color of my skin. Seems weird to be racist towards her, but also only like her for the color of her skin. You know what you are is just a dirty and that's what I like about you. All right, so we covered sex, religion, and racism. Let's see if this video gets demonetized. I've got more bad date stories to comment on, so maybe I'll do a follow-up video, but we'll see how this video does. In the meantime, be sure to hit that subscribe button to join my clubhouse. I'm building a clubhouse of the coolest people on YouTube, and this is your chance to get in on the ground floor. All you gotta do is subscribe. And after you do that, check out this other video I made. Todd is an awesome Todd, he reigns.